Hey guys, real quick, I wanna tell you, you have until December 18th to get your 2017 John's Arcade shirt. That's right, a limited run, special 2017 arcade tech support shirt. Go to johnsarcadeshirt.com. Also on there is the OG John's Arcade logo shirt. So if you missed those past campaigns, here's your chance to get that shirt. And most importantly too, you European guys, now there is UK fulfillment. If you go there, select the Euro option, okay, at johnsarkshirt.com, and those shirts will be fulfilled from the UK. So hopefully you guys can save some dough on shipping instead of shipping it from the US. Anyway, great way to support the channel. If you like what I'm doing, please buy a shirt at johnsarkshirt.com, link below. All right, guys, let's get on with the show. Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade. And by the way, look at this. <laughs> so the Bally Senti Mini Golf is down here, okay? And it has nowhere to go. Actually behind it is the Mad Planet. So it's just kind of here for now. And then also over here, the Mortal Kombat 2 project is now in the basement. So this past weekend, my friend Tim, that Tim guy here on YouTube came over. He helped me bring both of these games down while it was snowing, like we just kind of made it getting them down here. Like winter is officially here. I mean, we had a massive snowstorm here in New England over the weekend. So I just made it, the games are down here. So we're gonna have to finish the Mortal Kombat 2 in the basement in the next video. Yes, I know, I did not work on it over the weekend, but we're gonna resume that next weekend. We basically have to put the control panel back together, put it all together, and then the cabinet is done, and then we'll work on the electronics and the monitor and all that stuff and get the game working 100%. And then of course, right now, I have nowhere to put the games. So later this month, I'm gonna clean out the other side of the basement and we'll find permanent homes for these two games. But right now, they're just kind of hanging out in the middle. And I know it's not ideal, but I don't have a choice. So anyway, that's not what we're gonna do in this video though. We're gonna talk about something kind of fun and light and different. Um, we're gonna talk about these right here. These are the Basic Fun mini arcade games. Now, Basic Fun sent me these to review, okay? And I'm sure a lot of you guys are gonna be getting stuff like this in your stockings for Christmas. <laughs> I know this is the kind of stuff I always get. Um, but we talked about these games before. Not these exact ones, but the other Basic Fun games. I actually gave a bunch of them away last year on the channel. But these are new versions, and what they did is kind of really weird to me compared to the ones we talked about before. Because the ones we talked about before, like the Cubert, I think the Centipede, they were more like arcade perfect, okay? I think the Cubert was running like an NES version version or something, and I don't know about the Centipede one, but these ones are kind of emulating the kind of uh, VFD uh, displays that were on the original Coleco handhelds, the little mini arcade cabinets, the kind of the vacuum fluorescent displays, and that's what these are kind of emulating, but they're not vacuum fluorescent displays, they just kind of look like it, like it, and it, it, it's kind of on these little LCD screens, so I thought in this video, we'd open up each one, we'd play them, check it out, compare them to the real original arcade game, because I have all of these games, um, and then maybe we'll take one apart. What do you guys think? Does it sound fun? <laughs> all right, let's take a look here. So they got three different versions right now. At least these are the ones they sent me, okay? They sent me Frogger, Cubert, and Centipede. And by the way, I'll, I'll be giving these away on the channel here. We'll, we'll talk about it at the end of the video how you can win them. But they sent them to me like this. The guy said they, they had Centipede, but it was open. So here it is. This one's already open. I guess we'll just kind of take a peek at Centipede first, okay? Now, the cabinet design, and actually, we should probably go upstairs. Why don't we do this one last and we'll look at my Centipede upstairs. Why don't we do Cubert first, okay? And then it says, so the artwork, the logo is all correct. The cabinet obviously is the wrong profile, you know? That's definitely not cute, but we'll, we'll get mine here in a second. But it definitely has like the right logo and all that stuff. So the art assets they're using are all correct. And it says here, hop on each cube to change the color. Watch out for enemies like slick and coily. Ride the flying disc back to the top and escape enemies. Catch the magic green ball to freeze the bad guys. Manufactured by Basic Fun. Now we talked about the cube before and again, it was running like an NES version of Cubert. Maybe they got in trouble or something. I don't really know. But they changed it, and the cabinet's a little bit different, too. So let's remove this. And it has AA batteries in it already. Now, the one thing that's interesting on the Cubert is that you can see that... Let me see if you guys can see that. It has the play field on here already. And, and these are the kind of tricks... When I was a kid in the 80s, you know, I would collect these little handheld games, like the Coleco ones. And... 
And a lot of them would have these kind of overlays and then like little images would just light up on the overlay to kind of simulate whatever. And so they were, you know, because the display that they were using back in the day couldn't actually draw this complex play field, they would just kind of do it with an overlay. So they're kind of doing that with this one. But what's interesting though about this, so we turn it on. Now see how it lights up? It's completely emulating that. I think there's just a little tiny LCD display in here that's kind of kind of emulating the VFD display that they used back in the Coleco games, okay? It's a really interesting effect, isn't it? Because it, you can see here that there's faint versions of the Qbert, we'll call them sprites in the background, but they're really not there. Because if you turn it off, you, you can't see that. Only the only the outline you can see. Because like in the old days, like here, let me grab the, my uh, Coleco uh, Donkey Kong Jr., which was actually made by Nintendo though, this one. This one's kind of a, the wrong one to compare. But if you look in there, like the game's off right now. So you can see that the little sprite things are always there and they would just light, light it up behind it. See that? So they're always there. So they're kind of emulating that with an LCD display by making it kind of faint. Let me turn it on again. So you got the coin sound. So look at that. So when you jump on the square, it lights it up on the side instead of the top. Again. So the sound effects are correct. So they're trying to emulate the Coleco completely. I I don't know what I think about this. I, what do you guys think? Would you rather have this kind of uh, fictional Coleco style game or would you rather have an arcade perfect port? I think it's very interesting. So let's kind of come over to my frog, uh, my cubert here and we'll kind of compare. All right, so here's here's the original cubert, right? And so mine has the swearing marquee, which I guess was on the original games. Um, actually, when I got this game, it, it did have the marquee that looked like this, this logo, okay? But the artwork is very similar to the original, you know, the Cubert on the side and Coily and uh, whatever that guy's name is on the right. It's just kind of laid out different because of the aspect ratio. But the original one, mine, had the Cubert in the center instead of the swearing, okay? So the bezel artwork is actually correct too. It's just a different aspect ratio. You see that? But it's actually the right art. It's a little stretched and someone redrew it. It's not exact, but it's kind of the spirit of it. It's, it's in the ballpark. Like, like that Qbert right there is looking to the left and this one's looking forward. Control panel, again, in the ballpark, not exact, right? Obviously the profile of the cabinet is completely wrong and the side art's also wrong because that is the original side art right there. Whereas they have the actual word Qbert on the side, the original did not. And then the sounds, so we were, if we were to play this. So this is the original. Now in the original, when you jump on the square, it lights up on the top. And on the handheld one, it lights up on the side, again, to emulate that VFD display. Oh, I didn't notice if it had the swearing. Let's just do this. You guys can hear that. Oh, my knocker didn't fire. What's up with that? Oh, I didn't get anyone. That's why. So let's jump off. There's my knocker. I want to get the swearing. All right, so let's try the handheld one. We'll try to listen to this the best we can. So it's got the swearing, that's good. So the sounds seem to be all right. Let's clear the level and see what happens. Let's, like, the little characters are super small. Oh my God. I wanna see if I can use that little platform to get rid of them. Okay. Oh wait, I died? Oh my God, let's try it again. Let's just clear the level and see what happens. Control actually feels pretty good. Now the original Qbert had a four-way 
Those sounds are alright. Boy, you can go through this thing. The controls are actually pretty good, I have to admit. I give them an A plus for the sounds. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> eh, it's mildly entertaining. I don't really mind the Clico style. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. All right, let's let's take a look at the Frogger one. Now the Frogger one, I kind of noticed issues right away. Okay. So here's the Frogger one. Let's kind of go over here to my Frogger game. Okay. So this is the original Sega Gremlin artwork, okay? The logo right there, that frog, that tire. So, Frogger logo completely different, okay? The frog, kind of in the vein. They got sprites on the bezel here. So they, they took some artistic liberty with, with Frogger, completely. Now the profile of the cabinet, same as the um, Qbert. So they're using just one mold for all these, okay? So, they dropped the ball on this one completely. Now, there was a Frogger Clico game, and uh, I don't think I had... I, I think I had only Pac-Man on the Clico mini arcade games. I don't think I ever had Frogger, and I, I might have played it at a friend's house, but I really don't remember how it played, to be honest. But anyway, looking again here at the marquee, though, that's all wrong. The bezel is all wrong. The original one had the tire track. So they definitely departed from the original art, I'm wondering if somehow this evolved over time and they started using these, this logo like on apps and, and maybe games for consoles later on. But let's turn it on. Okay, again, it's that Coleco style, right? And if we turn off the light here, you can kind of see that you have some of these quote-unquote sprites that are just a percentage lit, right? But if we turn it off, it's really not there, okay? So it, it's totally the LCD that's doing all of that. You guys see that? So they're totally emulating that VFD display. All right, let's start it. Let me get my mic up here. We'll kind of mic the, the music. That's, that's not the right song. Okay, music's not right. The, the moving sound is. So the music's not not right, not correct. I don't know what I would do with this. I mean, would you try to get a high score? I don't hate that it's kind of emulating the Clico style game. It's like a weird mashup. Yeah, I don't know what that music is, but it's not right. <laughs> clear level. Guys. The music's like right for a second, then it's not. All right, that was right. So let's let's try the arcade version, so you guys can kind of see. All right. So that's the song. Oh my god. Like the music it was playing was kind of like it, but wasn't it. Unless the pitch was different, I just sounded weird to me. So 
So there you go. What do you guys think? <laughs> Let me kill off the frogs. So it definitely looks different, but again, they're going for this look. This is on purpose. I want to hear that theme song one more time. All right, let's try it again. Turn it off. That's right. That's totally wrong. No, it's wrong. It's like kind of in the ballpark, the music, but it's totally not right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I, I say let, let's go upstairs and we'll we'll check out my centipede and we'll compare it to this centipede and see how close it is. All right, we're upstairs. So here's the little mini centipede cabinet. Now, my centipede is not the full size upright. This is the cabaret, and the cabaret was like a smaller version, kind of designed to go into bars, a little more adult. It's got wood grain on the sides instead of the kind of cartoony bright graphics. But anyway, the gameplay is exactly the same, okay? And, and the artwork also very similar, some of the elements, like, like the marquee and stuff. So this logo on the marquee, is, it's in the ballpark. I don't think it's exact. Same with this here, okay? You can see these kind of like uh, bubbly things here. Also on the marquee on the original, okay? Um, the side art is definitely in the ballpark. The original did not have centipede though. It was more just this image up and down. So they kind of added that. But overall, it's kind of in the ballpark. Look at the control panels. The, the, the full size upright also had a very similar control panel to the, uh, to the cabaret version, okay? Now let's turn it on. Okay, and you can kind of again see that they're emulating that kind of Coleco display showing you what what it's what could be lit when it lights see that kind of that preview one thing to note is that centipede is a trackball game okay this has a joystick now there is actually a kickstarter for a mini centipede game that is like arcade exact with a little tiny teeny trackball i backed that thing and we'll be talking about that when it ships i think it ships sometime in april i think the kickstarter might still be going i'm not sure it's not cheap but it's the first like real looking mini arcade game i've ever seen kind of something i would have dreamed about as a kid anyway let, let's kind of try this out okay so the start button all right i can tell right away the sounds are right on the money but again, you're controlling this with a joystick, which does feel a little weird. Kind of makes the game feel a little Space Invader-ish. And the centipedes themselves and the mushrooms look very weird. You can see here the fleas dropping down. Sounds are spot on for the most part. Not really detecting anything that's jumping out. Let's clear the level and see what happens. Alright, so that, that sound is that spider. I think it's pretty much rinse and repeat. There's the fleet. There, oh, there's the little millipede that goes across. So it seems to have all the elements of the game. The spider, the millipede, the flea. Can shoot the mushrooms. It's actually pretty okay, considering that it looks like a ColecoVision game, a Coleco handheld game. All right, so let's kind of compare that now to the real thing. The sounds are pretty much right on. I think the banging of the drum sound is a little bit different. And obviously the trackball is the way to play it. That little handheld version, very stiff, it did feel kind of like you're playing Space Invaders or something with the left-right movements. You could move up and down though. There's the flea. So all those sounds and the spider, And the little scorpion thing that runs across, they're all there.
So yeah, I think it's definitely in the ballpark. The sound's spot on. The gameplay obviously looks nothing like this, but they captured the spirit of it in that kind of Coleco style. All right, why don't we go around the basement? Let's tear this thing apart. What's inside here? All right, I thought it'd be kind of fun to take one of these apart. Now, full disclosure, I'm not Ben Heck. <laughs> I don't know a lot about the modern kind of surface mounted chips and what they do, but I'm always interested to see what's inside. So why don't we open it up and we can talk about it, you know, in the comments or whatever, but let's take a look here, okay? So it looks like it's gonna open actually relatively easy. There's like four Phillips screws. So let's go in here. And by the way, it does come with three batteries. So we'll take the battery door off real quick. Okay, so it comes with three kind of off-brand batteries. GP, extra heavy duty. All right, so what I, what I also thought was interesting was this right here in the back. Almost like you could mount it to the wall. Like, would you put this on your wall? Because you, you could with these little holes here, right? You could put a nail through there and then it kind of will lock into place. I'm not sure what the point of that is. It, that's what it looks like to me. But there's no security screws, it's just straight up Phillips. So let's just go ahead and open this up. I wonder if there's any opportunity to mod this thing. Again, I just, I, I'm trying to figure out why they decided to go with this style graphics when they were kind of doing almost a one-to-one -one version of the games before. I don't remember which ones I had before. I think I had Qbert and... Did I have Frogger before? All right, let's see if this thing opens. And it does. All right, so I don't know what just happened there. All right, so we got a big blob on here. It's kind of covering up whatever chip is in there. And this button just came off. Hmm, what is this that came off here? Is that on there? Yeah, it was. So it looks like this hole right here is like for a reset and then it would hit that little, little switch that's in here. So this right here, let's take these off. Again, I don't really know what I'm looking at, but this is always fun. <laughs> Hopefully we can put it back together. So this little board here is obviously the electronics of it, and then the display is, is it's sandwiched with the display be kind of neat to make a little handheld version of this, wouldn't it? Because there's not much to it. Or even use this joystick as a base for some project, right? Alright, so here's... Okay, so you can see the little LCD display right here. So here's the display itself. Whoa, what's going on here? Whoa, this is really interesting. Let's see what happens when we power this up. Like, what kind of display is that? Alright. So let's turn it on. Oh, wow. Oh, this is the backlight for the LCD. I see. Boy, that's pretty wild. So this is like the backlight for the LCD display. Oh, I just broke it. Oh no, I think it timed out. Battery 
came loose. Huh, that's really neat. I don't know what's going on there. Boy, you know what? Like, what happens when you, when you play the game? Boy, I don't know. It sure is kind of cool. Like, if I turn it off, though, all that... Oh, shit. <laughs> I really broke it now. <laughs> All right, so this piece right here. Oh, wow. The stuff is is actually there all the time. Do you see that? Does this thing work? I think I totally broke it. Yeah, I did. Boy, I don't know, man. This is some voodoo they're doing here. Really interesting. So how is this thing making connection here? All right, let's see if, this, if we can put this back together. There. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing, but it's it's kooky <laughs> because you could see the stuff, and then is it like a light pipe? I think it is. Really interesting, guys. You tell me, how do you think this works? It's kind of cool. <laughs> well, I guess we destroy Galaxian. <laughs> so, you know, guys, I'm going to be giving away these. Um, and by the way, which, I'll tell you right now, the Cubert one is definitely the best of the bunch. I'd say, I'd say Frogger's maybe the weakest as far as, like, sounds and... And stuff and artwork, you know. I think Cubert's probably the strongest of the bunch. Um, I think gameplays why I probably would rather play Frogger though than the Centipede version. Um, but I'm definitely going to give my thumbs up to the Cubert one. I think that's kind of the most fun of the bunch. And I thought the controls were actually pretty tight. Um, anyway, I want to give these away. So we have uh, we've got three Froggers and a Cubert. Um, if you want the broken centipede one, I'll give it away too. <laughs> but what you gotta do is uh, send an email to me at john at johnsarcade.com. That's john at johnsarcade.com. Uh, in the subject line, put uh, mini space arcade, mini space arcade. And then in the body of the email, maybe just say which one you want. Not gonna guarantee you'll actually get that one. I'm just gonna randomly pick the winners, but just say which one you'd rather have and maybe that'll when I pick the four winners, I can figure out who gets what. Um, but yeah, those are kind of neat. I wonder how many of you guys out there are going to get these for Christmas. <laughs> Again, I don't understand why they went with this kind of Coleco style angle. I, 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 my instinct would be you'd want the kind of the arcade perfect, right? Um, and then after taking it apart here and seeing that the images are actually part of the screen, I don't get how they did this. <laughs> 
it's magic. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back very soon in the next video working on the Mortal Kombat. And then end of the month here, we're gonna be doing the UK vids and the Fun Spot vids and, and just fixing stuff down here, making the basement perfect. So, anyway guys, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching. Check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. Later, and, oh, and, and, and by the way, before I forget, uh, if you want to order a John's Arcade shirt, you have until about December 18th. It's a terrific way to support the channel. If you like what I'm doing here, go buy a shirt. Go to johnsarcadeshirt.com. We have the 2017 tech support shirt. We also have the OG John's Arcade logo. And most importantly, you European guys, there's now European fulfillment. So when you go to johnsarcadeshirt.com, go to the second page. There's a couple items that say Euro at the front. Select the Euro ones, and those will ship from the UK, hopefully saving you guys a lot of money on the shipping. I know last time a lot of the European guys had to ship from America, and I don't think the shipping was very great. Uh, the cost was a lot at Teespring. So anyway, johnsarcadeshirt.com. You have about a week here. The, the the campaign ends on Monday, December 18th. And if you, I, I think if you, you do like rush shipping, you're kind of guaranteed to get it before Christmas or something. Anyway, check it out, johnsarcadeshirt.com. All right, guys, that's it. I'll see you very soon. Later, and bye.